Hi everybody, welcome. My name is Cyrus. Today the thing I want to talk about is how to use STAT to find SEO opportunities at scale. And I mean massive scale. Now a lot of you have probably heard of STAT, you may know that it has an excellent reputation, but it's possible you haven't actually used it or have a very good understanding of what it actually does. So that's, that's what I'm going to try to cover today and explain how powerful it is at discovering SEO opportunities in ways that can inform content strategy, uh, competitive analysis, and a lot more. So STAT, the full name of STAT is actually STAT Search Analytics. Uh, on the surface, what a lot of people understand is that it is a rank tracker, uh, tracking thousands of keywords at a time, anywhere across the globe. But underneath the hood, it's actually a lot more than a rank tracker. It's a rank tracker, it's a competitive landscape tool, it's a SERP analysis and intent, and allows you to do some pretty incredible things once you dig into the data. So let me dig into a little bit about how it actually works. So like a lot of keyword rank trackers, you start with keywords. But one of the differences is, is all the different attributes that you can assign to each of your keywords. Uh, so first is very familiar, the market or the search engine. So you want uh, Canadian English results or Canadian French results. Any market in the world that's available, uh, it's pretty much available for you to use in stat. The second is location, which is a slightly different concept. So you can define zip codes, cities, uh, be as specific as you want. This is very important for multiple location businesses or if you're running an advertising campaign in a certain part of the country and you want to track very specific results. But you can define location very specifically for each of your keywords. Uh, third is device, mobile or desktop, especially important with uh, mobile first indexing uh, and increasing mobile results, but also tags, smart tags. And this is where the true power of stat comes in. The things, you, the ways that you can use smart tagging. So you can tag your keywords in multiple ways, you, assigning multiple tags to slice them and dice them any way you want. So different ways that you can tag keywords in stat uh, is anything that's important to your business. For example, you can create keyword groups. Uh, based on what's important to you. At Moz, we have, we tag keywords with SEO in it or anything that's important to your business uh, that you want to create a keyword cohort out of. Or location, like we were talking about, uh, if you're running an advertising campaign in Indiana and you want to uh, tag certain keywords uh, that you're targeting there, something like that or uh, all your Kansas City keywords or your London or Berlin keywords. Product categories. So if you sell multiple categories, you sell TVs, books, dresses, anything you want, you might want to tag all those into a particular keyword uh, category. Or attributes, such as 55 inch television versus a 48 inch television, when you want to get very, very specific across your product line. Um, and also your brand. At Moz, we track everything with the word Moz in it, or Nike or Apple or whatever your brand is, or if you have multiple brands. Basically, Anything that's important to your business, any KPI that you measure, any, anything that's relevant to your marketing department or finance or anything else like that, you can tag. And that's where the true power comes in. Because once you tag, you've created a keyword cohort or a group. And then you can see your share of voice across that, in, that entire market using just that group. So if you want to track yourself against a very specific set of keywords, you can see your share of voice, share of voice meaning uh, how much visibility you have in Google search results, and, go, and SERP will, uh, stat will show you your exact competitors and how you rank among those. And generally, you want to see yourself going up and to the right. But if you're not, you can see exactly who's beating you uh, and where their movement is and how you're doing for that specific keyword group, which is incredibly valuable uh, when you're working on a particular set of keywords or a campaign. But my favorite part, and this is where the true power comes in because it can inform your content strategy, and this is where the SEO opportunities are actually at, is the analysis of SERP features and intent. Because what STAT will do is, out of the thousands of keywords that you put into it, it will analyze the entire SERP of each of those and it will co uh, collect all the SERP features that it finds and tell you exactly what you own and don't own and where your opportunities are. So let's give an example that's a little more concrete. So let's say uh, you track a bunch of keywords within a particular cohort and you see that most of the results have a featured snippet. Uh, and STAT will show you exactly what you own and what you don't own. Now what's cool about this is you can click into what you don't own and you can see the exact featured snippets that your competitors own that you can actually create some content strategy around and try and go steal those. Uh, 
a, a, a different way is images or news. So let's say that you notice that you're selling TVs or, or something like that, and almost all the SERPs have images, uh, and you don't own any of them. So that's gonna, something like that can inform your content strategy, where you go to your team and you're saying, hey, hey folks, we need to create more images or we need better structured data to get Google to show the images because this is the intent for this type of keyword and we're simply not owning it in this way. Uh, same thing with news. If you notice a lot of news results uh, and you're not a news organization but you're competing for these keywords, that can inform your content strategy and maybe you need to be, go after those news uh, keywords or try something else. Video is another one. More and more SERPs have video results. Uh, with video carousel and things like that. Uh, and if you're, you can see exactly what you own and what you don't own. And a lot of times you're going to find that certain domains are beating you on those videos and that may inform, uh, especially for the high volume keywords that you want to go after, you may want to be creating more video content for that. Uh, but it all depends on the, on the SERP and you're going to find different uh, feature sets and different combinations for every keyword cohort that you do. So what's important to you and what's important to track is going to show up differently every time, but it's going to show you exactly where the opportunities are. Uh, FAQs are another thing, uh, rich snippets uh, sort of results. You may find that your competitors are all using FAQ markup. You're not using any. That could inform your SEO strategy. Uh, I'd say and you might start incorporating more FAQs because Google is obviously rewarding those in the SERPs and your competitors are gaining those and not you. Other things, any, any, virtually any SERP feature that's trackable, you can find local results, Twitter boxes. You may find that for certain queries, Google is surfacing Twitter results. And maybe that means you need to be on Twitter more than you actually are right now and see who's ranking for those results instead of uh, something that you're doing on site. And maybe it's you need to do more YouTube. It's not all necessarily on your site, but this will tell you where you need to invest those opportunities. Uh, review stars, podcasts, more. All of this will tell you what's important and where the opportunities are and where you're winning and losing and the exact keywords that you can go after uh, if you want to win and the exact feature sets where your competitors get, are getting traffic and you aren't. So I use Stat. I love it every week. Uh, it's a great tool. And if you want to try it out, I encourage you to do so. That's it for me. Thanks, everybody.